It's the Celebrity MasterChef semi-finals. After weeks of heats, only the best eight cooks are left. The competition has gone up a notch. Some of the other celebrities are really good cooks. I can perform in front of millions all around the world and it's fine. I can't pick up a knife on MasterChef and not feel extreme anxiety. We do have some talented individuals, that's for sure. Unfortunately, we have to begin to whittle them down. Over the next two shows, they will face their toughest challenges yet. I'll get them in now. It never gets any easier, that's for sure. Could start crying, to be honest with you. Yum, yum. I'm getting hungry. I better not mess up. I don't think that's, there's any room now to really be messing up. It's a starving Victorian. Even I couldn't eat it. Ah! It's like all my worst MasterChef nightmares. I have been a judge on MasterChef for 10 years, and I have never seen anything like this in my life. I love it. At the end, only four of them will become finalists. It's early morning in Victorian Britain. And the semi-finalists have been transported to Blist's Hill, Shropshire. A mining town with the sights, sounds, and flavors of the late 1800s. Welcome to a MasterChef semi-final. Now, Bliss Hill is a working-class Victorian town. Today, we want you to give the people of this town a treat. Your job today is to prepare a feast for 70 people. Ooh. Two teams, Cherie, Chesney, Ryan, Tom. You're the red team. Sam, Misha, Kimberly and Scott. You're the blue team. Ladies and gentlemen, lunch is at one. Off you go. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the teams now have two and a half hours to create dishes from ingredients that would have been commonly used during the Victorian period. I'm way out of my depth. Victorian times, I'm American. I can do Wild Wild West, but Victorian times, is not my genre. <laughs> the teams each need to make a meat, fish and vegetarian dish and a pudding. I feel like four separate things in two and a half hours is gonna be tough. It's a real challenge, this one. My maximum limit of people is usually seven people tops. So 70 people, that's a lot. The blue team have been given beef sirloin, kidneys, herrings, pearl barley, suet, ale, fruit and veg, including new season asparagus, and a range of spices common in this era, like cinnamon and mace. So we can make stew, stew and dumplings, yeah, yeah. veggie one, because that's quite substantial with the dumplings, do you know what I mean? It's vegetable suet as well, yeah. so we, that's good. We've put Scott in charge. I think he's good, he's very vocal. I think he'll, he'll keep us all on our toes. What is this thing here? That's awful. Well, what's supposed to do with that? Well, this, this, we could do a steak and kidney pie. The red team have pork, bacon, shrimps, John Dory, cider and ale, and a selection of fruit and veg, including cabbages and pineapples. One of the most prized things in the whole Victorian times was a pineapple. Right. People used to hire them for their tables to show off their wealth. Because wow. they're wow. worth so much money. So we've got to use that for the dessert. We have to. With their pudding ingredients selected, their next choice is to make Cherie leader. So we're deciding what on. What pasta are we going for? Ravioli type? I'd say whatever's e 
What is it easiest? I mean, I was going to say like a, a vegetarian lasagna kind of thing as well. What are they? Pasta parcels? What are they called? Uh, oh, ravioli. No, no, like ravioli, but they're twisted, like little parcels. We're just talking at the moment. I have a feeling we're still going to be talking in two and a half hours' time. <laughs> but... <laughs> Today, I would like to see some skill, I'd like to see some confidence, but more importantly, something that takes me to a Victorian era. To cook a Victorian feast out of a tent is a hard, hard task. With the clock ticking, Scott's blue team is already hard at work. We're pretty organised, I think. I mean, everybody's... Sam's on the dessert, he's making a kind of spotted dick, you know, toffee sauce, decadent sort of dessert. We're making a steak, kidney, mushroom and ale pie. Kimberly's going for the fish, now she's going to leave the tails on, take the heads off and sort of dress them on a plate, but grid griddle them, you know, so they look lovely. And I'm doing a veggie stew with dumplings, you know, nice and big and chunky and hearty. Like the menu, like the menu. Do you know what sort of meat it is? It's steak, isn't it? It's a sirloin steak. Yeah, yeah it's a yeah. very, very beautiful piece of meat. It's beautiful, so I'm going to make it yeah. like diced because we're going to make a pie, you know? OK, fine. You need to move pretty fast because your pie mix needs to get on. It's going to take a good two hours. We ain't got no panics, man. We just need to keep an eye on the, on the time. Sam only has two small mixers to make 70 portions of spotted dick, so he needs to make several batches. I don't know why I keep getting put in charge of uh, puddings. I've not had that much success with puddings, but, uh, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Sam? Yes. You are a sweet, chubby little pudding. <laughs> 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 yep, I suppose I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty tough start to a semi, isn't it? It is. It is, definitely. And uh, the last time I was doing mass catering, I was in charge of a sponge pudding. It didn't go tremendously well. So, uh, yeah, I've got that in the back of my mind, actually, which All is... we hope is you learn from your mistakes. Exactly. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. With the sirloin chopped and browning, Misha's getting some help prepping the kidneys from team leader Scott. So just peel it off, because this can be put in that fat... Yeah. ..that we've got going. Thank you, suet, yeah. Yeah. That's so gross, isn't it? Kimberly's also getting her hands dirty with over 30 herring to scale and gut. Do you think they did hollandaise sauce in the Victorian times? They probably did but lots of butter sauces. Butter sauces. Why are you thinking of doing it with the asparagus? Maybe a dill infused. Or, yeah. Yeah, do it, yeah. do it. How come you get the fish? The messiest, stickiest. Couldn't you stick up for yourself? Well, you know, I am quite... Confident with fish, I use it a lot, but I've never had my hands quite this bloody before. You have gone from a pop singer to a Victorian fishwife. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Who would have thunk it? On the red team, Chesney's also faced with a large pile of fish to prep. I've never filleted a John Dory before, and these little things are dangerous. They are so spiky, so I'm having a bit of a hard time with it, to be honest. I've definitely pulled a short straw here, for sure. <laughs> God. I've got about 100 fish to do here, and the first one's taken me half an hour, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Tell me how you got burdened with leadership. Oh, do you know what? I didn't have any choice. They just all looked at me and said, it's you. I think you're a natural leader. Do you? Yeah, I do. Oh, I, I do. Don't know. Tell me, what's your menu? I'm doing a pineapple cake. Uh, Ryland's doing the vegetarian pasta. Um, what's, what's Tom doing? He's doing roast pork. Uh, Chesney's on fish, so he's doing... What are you doing now, Chesney? I'm rinsing these bones. What are they? John Dory fish. Yes. Served with what? With a what sauce, Chesney? Well, I'm going to make the, um, the, the stock and I'm going to uh, worry about exactly what the stock okay. is going to go okay. in with it. So. Let me get this right. Reduce it down. When, when... You just said I was a good leader. I think you're yeah. going to actually take that back. Let me... <laughs> Tom's got his pork into roast and is starting on the potatoes to go with it. Tom, what are you doing with the potatoes? I'm going to part boil them yeah. and then um, put them in a roasting tin with rosemary and shallots and then just... With the skin on? For a feast, 
Rustic S Victorian? Rustic Victorian. We're not talking about Rustic Victorian, we're talking about Victorian Feast. S feast. So I'm skins off then? <laughs> yes, peeled potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> You're pushing the potato round, aren't I you? I push the potato thing? in my hand at the same time. OK? So John's just taught me a technique how to make your roast potatoes, like, really pretty. Which, I mean, well, you can tell who's who, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh. But Tom is not the only Red Team member making interesting choices for a Victorian feast. Let me ask you something. What? How much pasta do you think was going on in the Victorian era? I don't know. I weren't there. Charles Dickens would be turning in his grave. Yeah, well, if he'd had a bit of tagliatelle, he would have been still here. <laughs> <laughs> he would do. There we are. I think this is going to take forever. Ah, oh, there's loads of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm wandering around Cherie's tent and I'm very, very concerned. And I'll tell you why, there's some good cooks in there, but Cherie has let all of them just be in charge of their own dish. Nobody in that tent knows what their teammates are doing. I hope that it turns out all right, but that is a recipe for a Victorian disaster. The teams are 45 minutes in. Kimberly, how are you doing? Wow, this is, right, it's intense, let me tell you. This is the most unglamorous thing I have ever done in my entire life. I'm covered in fish guts and scales and blood. And I hate when there's half of a head. It's one thing doing fish for four people, but doing it for seven to eight is ridiculous. <laughs> This living Victorian town is manned by dedicated volunteers who run the businesses, shops and schools just as they would have 120 years ago. It's definitely a treat for them today. Uh, they'll all work very hard, so I think this is going to be a good reward for them. The Victorians themselves, and especially the working man, you would have tried to grow as much as possible. So it was quite traditional for people to keep a pig or have a share in a pig. And the sort of thing about, you know, eating everything but the squeak is very true. I mean, a working man is looking for, um, you know, they've worked hard, they've used a lot of energy, so you're looking for a lot of protein, carbohydrates. Um, so something that's going to leave you full and satisfied, ready for uh, the next shift, basically. <laughs> Back in the red tent, Chesney is still filleting his John Dory. You've got an hour and 15 minutes ah. before lunch. That hurts. It's not going to happen. We've got Chesney and we've got a big pile of uncooked fish. Now, unless the Victorians quickly discover sushi, Chesney's in big trouble. The fillets aren't the only things taking too long. This is nowhere near, guys. This isn't going to happen. Really. What'd you say, Chesney? It, well, this is nowhere near boiling. Just, I don't think it's going to happen. With no fish stock, Chesney needs a plan B for his sauce. Uh, right, listen, let's not panic now, because you're just going to you're just going to be running around like a, a lunatic. Right. You need to decide what you want to put with it. What should we serve with this fish? What can we do quickly? And I've got these tomatoes here. I don't know. God knows. Uh, we are doing lentils, we've decided, in the end, uh, with tomato sauce and shallots. Right, get them in now. Right, Chesney, there's boiling water on top over there, so put that in there. Things are looking better for the blue team's fish dish. Now that I've got the grunt work out of the way, I'm just getting it nicely seasoned and whatnot, and it's just ready to grill, so I'm feeling a little bit of relief. Everyone all right? Yep. Let's do this, chaps. Let's get it on! Team leader Scott has been keeping a close eye on his troops, checking in on the steak and kidney pie. Have you tried it? Yeah, it tastes nice. Does it? Has it got enough seasoning? Yeah, Have we got mushrooms in here? Uh, no. Right, we need mushrooms in there. Yep. And the spotted dick. Give them, give them that one. Do it, do it. Turn them down like that, sort of like that. 
You know what I mean? So we get that okay. little candied little top. But he's only just turning his full attention to his vegetarian dish. We need to be pretty quick now. I haven't got the dumplings on, I haven't got the veggie thing cooking. Biggest fear right now is what? Just not getting it all out on time, it's that, that old one, but I think, you know, I think we got it in control. I'm really confident with the pies. The pies really taste great. Well, I did the filling. You know me and taste, airplane, so it tastes good. Do you think those dumplings are too big? Oh, right size. Because it's, cook it's cooking time, isn't it? I like Scott's tent. I like the endeavour. I like the teamwork. It stands in stark contrast to the other tent. Um, something's uh, burning or smoking. I can. Yeah, I can smell burning as well. Is that any of that on? Oh, my God, look at all this paper is burnt, the pudding. The greaseproof paper on Cherie's pineapple upside down cake has singed. Right, okay. I need to get some more paper. It's just manic. You know, at the beginning, you're just sort of like, yeah, yeah, and then it's now. And we don't even know if it's going to be right when it, you know, when we do dish it up and make it look nice. It's just, yeah, it's stressful. <laughs> Tom's pork needs every minute it can get to cook in time. But there's a problem with the oven. Is that oven on? Yeah. Are they? Well, they don't like it to me. <sighs> Way off. That pork is nowhere near. The pork needs to get to 70 degrees before it's safe to be served. So the oven turned off. So this pork is almost there, but these two, well, no one here. Yeah. Could start crying, to be honest with you. How's the pork? Just checking it. That's not cooked in the middle. Damn it. We're going to turn up on its end and back in the oven. There is an issue with the pork from the red tent. It's not cooked and we can't serve it. I think morale may be dropping in Cherie's tent. Ryland looks far from happy. He's about to introduce the Victorians to the delights of Mediterranean pasta dishes, which is a lovely thing for the Victorians, if they actually get it in time for lunch. How many more have you got to go? I've got about another 10 to go, I think. And then I've got to make a sauce and then something to go with it. You haven't made the sauce yet? No. Right. So it's all a bit uh, stressful in this camp, to be honest with you. The laughs have gone. Silence has uh, come among the contestants. It's pretty, pretty serious and pretty intense. Have we not got any room for this fish? At all? Yeah, there was one there, no, man. One? With 20 minutes to go, time is now running out for both teams. Yeah, we're on track. It's just now about seasoning things and presenting it and getting it on the plate and making it look nice. So, happy days, beer at the end. That's my motivation. Happy days of here again! Happy days! Happy days! Happy days! Happy days! Sorry, just had a moment. I had to do it. Had to do it. <laughs> yeah, we've all gone slightly <laughs> mad. <laughs> The difference now between this tent, now having fun and smiling, having worked really hard to begin with, these guys over here were full of smiles to begin with, and now it's a disaster. But it's not all plain sailing for the blue team. Do you know what? I think the dumplings have... Are the dumplings in there? Yeah. Yeah, we should have just maybe left them on top. Do you know what? I'm just... going to make some more now. 20 minutes. I'll help you. <laughs> Come on. We've had a bit of a boo-boo. Um, the dumplings probably soaked up so much fluid, and where we've stirred it around to season it, it's, um, they've just broken up. They're in there, and there's still bits and stuff, but I think when people have a stew, they want to... They do like a dumpling, don't they? They get the second load of dumplings on to cook. Scott, well, done the same thing, I think. They've just fallen down. Turn it off. Oh, God, what, whatever. It's a stew. It might be in there somewhere, but... They're uh, amazing, amazing disappearing dumplings. <laughs> it's going to be a really thick stew.
It's five minutes till lunch. But the red team are still behind. Is the first pork ready? Um, it's probably got another 10, 10 minutes. Rylan has had some last-minute inspiration for his pasta dish. It's coming in a leaf now, cos all it is, let's be fair, it's three bits of ravioli. It's not a lot for lunch. Give them a bit of leaf, laugh him. They'll think they've got more. But they ain't. How are we getting on? We've got some of the dishes plated up already, ready to go. We've just, we just turned the pork over again. It's nearly done. So, we're nearly there. Is it good? Right, it's 53. Oh, it's 53 it at a minute, it needs to be 70. You're going to have to start taking food over. If that pork's not ready, it's not ready. You'll have to come back for it. We are not amused. Oh, my God, my custard! You're joking. Oh, no, no, it's all right, you can fine. rescue it. All right, hold on, let me fine. get a big sieve. Get a bit of milk. In the panic over the pork, Cherie has let her custard scramble. <laughs> so we're just doing a salvage rescue job on the custard, but it's fine. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> fine. <laughs> What's the flex? What are they going to say? The flex are... We need more. It's Victorian! <laughs> ah! It's like all my worst masters have nightmares. I'm pretty hungry now. You know, it's a lovely day and we've been waiting a little while, so I'm quite hungry, yeah. Are you, are you Absolutely eating? starving. Guys, they're, they're literally... Everyone else is down there ready to, ready to go and we're waiting for us now. So what are we waiting for, the pork? Can we check the pork? Slice some, serve what's cooked, stuff that's not cooked, put it back. Have you got, is there a fork there? Yeah. Right, we're good to go, we're good to go. Nice one, love. Respect, please, I've won. Ah. 45 minutes late, lunch is finally served. We're desperately hungry here and at the back of the queue. It's got to be better than the dry bread and cheese sandwiches I normally have for me. I don't want too fancy. I'm just going to be too fancy, is it? Two steak and ales? Yes, please. There you go. The blue team, led by Scott, has served steak, ale and kidney pie with mashed potato, grilled herrings with a lemon dill butter sauce and boiled eggs, asparagus and pomegranate, squash and pearl barley stew with horseradish dumplings and side dishes of tomato salad, runner beans and roasted leeks. Who wants a pie? <laughs> Would you like a pie, yeah? Pie? Yeah. I can enjoy it. You on the pie, dude. Um, anyone else want pie? Can't beat a bit of beef. Very nice plateful. Yes, no complaints. I've got to be honest. I think it was slightly better than my mother's, especially the crust, which was just to die for. As Victorian dinners go, that's not bad at all. We've got a nice pastry top. There's a gravy, there's mashed potato and there's beans. That I like. Yeah, I like it as well. I was really impressed with me, should say. The food is honest and gutsy. Veggies? I have a lovely grilled herring with asparagus and dill sauce, if anyone is interested. Well, I had the fish, which was very nice. With our herring, which is cooked quite nicely, we've got lots and lots of dill, lots of lemon uh, and asparagus. I like the sauce a lot. You going for the veggie stew and dumpling? Thank you. Is that enough on the yeah, dumpling front? Well, there was a, a kind of dumpling that was uncooked in the middle. There was sweet uncooked, and there was a very greasy taste. So, as a starving Victorian, even I couldn't eat it. <laughs> that vegetarian food is workhouse food. That's slopping a pot. That's gruel. And I think the reason it is like it is is because he was pushing his troops and he wasn't keeping an eye on his own dish. When they were transporting the likes of me to Australia, they put those around people's ankles. We're so sorry to keep you waiting. There you go. Thank you very much. Enjoy it. The red team, led by Cherie, has served roast pork with apple and cider sauce, carrots and roast potatoes. Baked John Dory fillets with leeks and a tomato, lentil and shrimp sauce and a goat's cheese and spinach ravioli 
with tomato sauce served on raw cabbage leaves. Hello. Pork. There is more pork on the way. Would you like a carrot? Yes, please. There you go. How long do you think, Rylan? I'm thinking five. Five minutes. Tom's roast pork is popular, but there's not enough of it. Sorry, ladies. It is coming. There's lots of crackle in here. Come on, Rylan. Right, here we go. Pork, please. Pork. I'm really sorry, guys, there's no more potatoes. Oh, it's a bit rubbish. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it was beautiful. It's the nicest pork I've had for a long time. The portion size that I actually have been dished up isn't adequate. There it is. One lump of pork, a piece of carrot and half a potato. It's a little sparse, but the pork's well cooked and the potato's well cooked. Anybody for some fish? John Dory? Would you like some apple sauce? Oh, no, you've got no, fish. No, not with fish. We well, can have it anyway. <laughs> That's what you can have with it. Today I went for the fish and it was absolutely delicious. I hope this could have been a bit bigger, but I went up for seconds and I enjoyed it so much, so I don't really mind. Why have we got a lump of bread? Because they had nothing else to put on the plate. The fish itself is slightly overcooked. There is a nice, really salty, sweet sauce across the top. There is four raviolis left if you are a vegetarian getting quick. The ravioli was, was good. The, um, the cabbage leaf, a little bit on the tough side, but uh, they were nice, enjoyed it. Yeah. But the ravioli was really tasty, but it was a little bit hard. I think it possibly should have been cooked a bit more, and also it just wasn't enough. <laughs> have a bit of bread as well. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy it. What's it doing in a cabbage leaf? Pasta's a little thick. I, I can't taste anything inside it at all. And the tomato sauce on top lacks seasoning. You know, not very nice. God, just a disaster. Absolutely. I don't think it was a disaster. Well, it kind of is. We just didn't do enough. That was all it was. Back in the kitchens... <laughs> yeah! It's the moment of truth for both teams' sponge puddings. That's good. OK. <laughs> Looking good. This is authentic, though, because in Victorian times, they liked their food like that. I learned that. Yeah, rescue job. Go on, girl. <laughs> da, da, da. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. What a beauty. Oh, look at her. Look at her. Woo! After straining Cherie's scrambled custard, there isn't much left to serve. Don't be too generous with the serving of the custard, cos that's all we've got. <laughs> with, the <laughs> custard, <laughs> with the serving of the custard. Don't be too generous with the servings of the custard. For the blue team's dessert, Sam has made a spiced spotted dick with a tinned apricot base, served with toffee sauce and custard. Wonderful. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Enjoy. For the red team, Cherie has cooked a pineapple upside down cake with custard. That's enough. Ryan! I feel bad. People have been at work all day. <laughs> custard is all gone. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame. These two were given out too, too big a portion. Don't you start with me, you stingy woman. <laughs> I've never had um, pineapple upside down cake before, so it was really, really nice. I think some people's was a bit burnt on the bottom. Mine was OK, but, the, but yeah, it was a wee bit singed in other, in other places. I'd go up for seconds if there was any. Cherie did not manage to run the kitchen properly, but she managed to get a decent dessert out. Lovely. Right. Toffee sauce and custard. Toffee sauce and custard, lovely. Yes, Sorry, I am eating the spotted dick with the toffee sauce. Very rich, very spicy, and I think my favourite bit of it was the apricot in the middle. I love it. I love it. The sauce is absolutely amazing. First mouthful, it just went ping in your mouth. Wonderful. It's got an apricot bottom. Mm. That's very, very nice indeed. There's uh, hints of spice, a little bit of ginger, there's sugar on the top of it, there's mellow custard, and there's a decent sponge. Hey! 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 Good work, Tom. 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 Good work, Tom.
Um, thanks, Scott. Well, baby. Exactly. Thanks for being a good leader, man. Yeah. So who was responsible for the ravioli? I, I was Mr. Ravioli. It's perfect, thank you. Oh, so much. Yes! 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 I said this morning it was going to be a really, really tough challenge, and so it proved. But you can already see the ones that are pushing themselves, the ones that are prepared to work very, very hard. One or two have got a point to prove, I think. I totally agree with you. They're just cooks in a competition battling for their life because we've got one more task and two of them are leaving the competition. The celebrities now face their next challenge. And to begin with, they've been asked to randomly pick a cooking bench. Under the cloths on your benches are the ingredients and the recipe for a dish. Eight benches, eight cloths, eight different recipes. Reveal your ingredients. The recipes are based on historic British classics. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my God. Such as Cumberland Rum Nicky. I don't even know what that is. And Lancashire Courting Cake. I don't know what that is. Today's the day we celebrate the great British classic. We want you to do that classic justice. This is important, because at the end of this, two of you are leaving the competition. Ladies and gentlemen, one hour, 20 minutes, a great British classic. Let's cook. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Good luck, Good luck everyone. Good luck, everyone. I've got a large bowl and save all the cooking liquid, keeping the pan to the side. The fact is, it's a recipe, but you've got to think a little bit. It's about following the guidelines, delivering the classic, but with your special touch. Ryland has got a Lancashire courting cake. What a wonderful thing. A cake that was originally baked for a boy when he came into somebody's house when he was courting his love. Three layers of Victoria sponge, vanilla cream, really sweet, and then on top of that, strawberries to keep the sponge apart. And what Ryland's got to do is make sure the sponge is light and fluffy, then the cakes are cooled down enough before that cream and strawberry go anywhere near it. I think when I first started, I thought it was going to be, you know, just that bit of a jolly. And then after that very first challenge, that's when I knew I've got to really take this seriously now. And then, um, yeah, I'm, I'm still going. I just didn't expect to get this far. What worries you the most about this recipe? The, the cakes. The cakes, obviously, is the main concern, because if they don't rise, I've greased the whole tray, I've lined the bottom with baking paper, I've done all that to make sure it definitely comes out. But knowing my luck, it'll get stuck. So that's the only major worry. The rest of it is pretty much decoration, and that's what I'm good at. Are you staying in the competition? Uh, am I? Are you? I don't know. That's your job, isn't it? <laughs> Do you want to? I'll tell you after my cake comes <laughs> out. I'd love to stay. Ryland, I would love to stay. I'll miss you if you go. So man. will I. So will I. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> The whole MasterChef experience has been good. It's been a roller coaster ride, but one that I've loved every minute of. Even though there's been some low moments, there's definitely been some high moments and, uh, yeah, memories that I'll never forget, to be honest. Tom, you've yeah. got, you got that smile on your face. You're okay? Happy. Cornish pastas and sausage rolls. Oh. Yay! Why are you happy about that? Yeah, I think it's not too bad. I'm so the nerves are settled. I'm cracking on making the pastry. What's the, what's the trickiest bit of a Cordish pasty or a sausage roll? Do you know what? I couldn't tell you, I've never made one. <laughs> um, but obviously, I've made pastry before, and yeah, and obviously, I know what it tastes like. I'm a northerner, we love pasties. It might surprise you to say, you say you're a northerner, I like pasties, they come from the southwest. Yeah, right? I know, yeah, Cornish. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's a nasty cup. 
Oh my, yeah, it's gone to the bone. <gasps> Hold that. Hold it on. Don't worry. Can I just give me this chair on set? Hang on a minute. Don't worry about it. Just go and see what Tom's made a pretty bad mistake. He stuck his hand, without thinking about it, into a food processor and cut his finger to the bone, which means he's off to the hospital to get a few stitches. No Cornish pasties, no sausage rolls. Not a great British classic day. Break my heart. Tom can't finish today's test, but for the others, there's no let up. Misha's making for us Cumberland sausage, cold can and a red wine sauce. Why did I get this? Cumberland sausage always comes in a ring. That means that sausage has got to cook in that ring shape. It's got to have colour all the way through it. It's got to be cooked all the way through, and it's got to be served with a red wine sauce. I can tell you that I'm loving this competition so far. The most amazing parts are when you cook for all these people and they come back and they say they loved it, and then they come back for seconds and stuff. You really feel like you've hit it, you know? It's a bit like doing a show, when everyone's gone, oh, that song was great. That's what it feels like when people love your cooking. It's amazing. Misha, as this competition develops, you're working harder and looking more and more stressed. I know, you know me. I'm always panicking. Remember what you said about me before? You said I start off, like, having a panic attack and then I bring it in? Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to bring it in. <laughs> yeah. Look, you make me burn my cabbage, lard. I want to do it again. Are you stressed because because of how you feel about this competition? Yeah, I'm stressed because I can't even believe I'm in the semis. Let's just keep it real. The fact that I even got here is sick. So now I'm like, can I stay in it? The thing is, I want to please you guys, because you guys know your stuff about food, and I love food. And I, I respect people who know, who know their food. So it would be really disappointing if I mess up. For the sauce, melt butter and stir in flour to form a roux. I'm just so surprised at how much I love it. It's ups and downs, isn't it? I mean, you feel elation from having a good day, and then as soon as it finishes, I start to panic about it the next day. It's a bit nerve-wracking now. Scott, what's, what's your recipe, mate? Fish pie. You're a vegetarian? Yeah. But it was the quality of your last fish dish that got you into the semi final <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, my wife isn't a vegetarian, so I cook for her. You know, so I don't taste it, but, I mean, seasoning and stuff like that is something that I do do. How determined are you to stay here? Very determined. Obviously, you didn't have much talent as an actor. Do you think this might be...? <laughs> <laughs> do you think this might be...? Focus on your sausages! <laughs> Scott, good luck with that, mate. Cheers, mate. A good fish pie is a wonderful thing. Smoky fish with a soft fish, all pre-poached, sitting in a lovely, rich, creamy sauce topped with fluffy mashed potatoes. My issue right now for Scott is if that fish has been broken up too small, we don't have lovely hunks of fish inside a pie. You're halfway. You are halfway. 40 minutes left. Oh, not a very good sign, is it? I think the, the old nerves are kicking in again, back in the studio, back to the complete unknown. I was very shocked that I made it through to the semi-finals, but I'm here now and I want to keep going. I want to stay. Cherie's got a lemon chester pudding with a frozen summer fruit yoghurt. But really, that pudding of hers is a lemon meringue pie. Simply short, buttery, sweet crust pastry needs to be baked blind first so it can hold the liquid filling. Then an Italian meringue on top. Yum! What did you think when you first saw what you had to do? My thing about reading recipes and ingredients is, you know, I do have a tendency to panic and you kind of miss things off or, you know, so I just want to take my time and make sure I'm going over everything correctly. If you don't miss anything off, if you do what it says, it should come out right. <laughs> Enjoy. I don't think I'll ever get used to the pressure but the main thing that's getting to me now, and I hate it, I hate it about myself, is that I really want to get through. And I hate that. I never wanted to be that guy who was like, oh, yeah, I really, really want to get through. But I do. I can't, I can't deny it. So that's willing me on to want to do well. 
this. Sam's got a Devonshire apple dappini serving with custard. What it really is is a baked sponge pudding like a Chelsea bun with lots and lots of apples and then a syrup across the top in a flower shape, crisp on the outside but soggy on the inside. Sam, am I wrong or are you growing in confidence as the competition develops? I think I, think I am. Actually, yeah. My first few challenges weren't great at all, and I was really frustrated with myself. And then, you know, getting through to the semi-final, I think, has given me some confidence, which is great. Y you secretly like a pudding, don't you, mate? I love a pudding, but do you know what, Greg? I, I genuinely wouldn't have come into this competition thinking that I was the pudding man at all. You can't be the pudding man in this room, do you know why? Why? That's my job. OK, that's fair enough, yeah. Fair play. <laughs> Chesney's got a Cumberland rum nicky, which essentially is a short, sweet crust pastry tart with a lattice top filled with dried soaked fruit, lots of rum and lots of brown sugar. With only 20 minutes to go, the tart has just gone into the oven. It takes 35 minutes to cook. Ain't gonna be done! What's it like? cooking and having Misha staring at your bottom. Oh, <laughs> do you know what? I've been aware of that the whole time. <laughs> you need to stop. It's quite nice, actually. <laughs> Go on, Misha. Oh, I'm embarrassed. It'll calm you down, love. Stop that, stop Give that. Give it a good look. <laughs> when you've been at your absolute brilliant best, it's when you've brought your own recipe in. Yes, yeah, I think that's my forte, Greg. It's the, uh, it's when I know what I'm doing, something that I've practised. What worries you most about this recipe? Uh, the, the, the cake, the, um tart, whatever it is, <laughs> is not going to be ready, because it went in a little bit late, I have to say. Ooh! Ooh! Chesney, fingers crossed on your timing. Yes, thank you, mate. Thank you. Lift your hands up higher. There you go. Oh, I thought there as was you something do it, on there. As you do it, it'll give you a lighter dusting. I would like to think I'm feeling a bit more at ease, but as soon as we're about to enter the kitchen of darkness. <laughs> the butterflies in my stomach and the nerves are just so intense. It's ridiculous. Kimberly has got hake and she's served with wild garlic and mushrooms. And then she's got monk's beard, which is a lovely sea vegetable which is salty and crisp. The problem with hake is it dries out and it becomes like cotton wool. And she's going to make sure that hake is absolutely beautifully cooked. Kimberly, you have a tendency to use uh, quite daring and unusual ingredients, and of course you can't today, so... I know, I'm so far out of my comfort zone, I'm on another planet. It's unbelievable. Then every day I get stuck in and I have a moment where I'm like, you're not going to be able to do this and you're going to fail. And then I keep going and somehow in the end I'm quite pleased. I've got six minutes left and at the moment I've got three cakes, plate of strawberries, bowl of cream. So I'm a bit stressed. I don't think they're going to be done in time. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. You have three minutes left. Three minutes. Oh, I messed him up. One. I don't know how to get it out. I don't know how to get it out. Time is up. Likewise. Oh, my God. That looks amazing. Beautiful. Amazing. Well done, darling. Mine's awful. Stunning. Don't even look. I'm so embarrassed. Scott, up you come, please.
Scott's classic is fish pie filled with salmon, tiger prawns, smoked haddock and mussels, topped with piped mash and served with minted lemon peas. Yummy. Your bechamel seasoned nicely, your fish inside there is perfectly cooked. I love the sharpness you got on the peas. Very, very good. I love the prawns, the big chunky prawns that went in raw and they cooked in the sauce. Mm. Your fish, though, is becoming a bit shredded. Mm, I broke it up too much. You're breaking it up. Yeah. It needs to stay big and chunky, so when you put your, your fork in, you pull out lovely good big chunk. hunks of it. But good job. Appreciate it, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Help me! <laughs> Kimberly, could you bring your fish up, please? Kimberly has cooked wild garlic crusted hake with a classic accompaniment of clams and shrimps served with mushrooms, broad beans, and monk's beard. Yeah, very good, Kimberly. This wonderful bit where you can see the shards of fish glistening is a great sign. That's well-cooked fish. You've got saltiness amongst beard, you've got the, the wonderful richness of the parmesan cheese, herbs, and it all works really, really well indeed. Thank you. I like this, Kimberly. You proved once again you've got a decent touch, a decent Yay. palate. Happy you like it. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well done. You're relieved. Oh, You're so relieved. Jeez. <laughs> Cherie, your turn, please. <laughs> Cherie has made a lemon chester pudding, a Victorian version of a lemon meringue pie, but with the addition of ground almonds in the filling. It's served with mixed berry frozen yogurt. It's in a tin. I know, I know. I know. I literally took it out of the oven as you shouted, so I'm really sorry. I'd smash into that meringue and lemon all day long because if the lemon has got that nice sharpness and, of course, the meringue comes in with a big wave of sweetness and it balances the two beautifully. Your yoghurt is good as well, not too sweet. Unfortunately, your pastry's not cooked. Yeah. The, the only thing wrong with this is timing. There's nothing wrong with this. An extra six or seven minutes wouldn't cure. God, I feel so stupid. Why? I'm an idiot. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. The flavours are right, but your pastry's not cooked underneath. I can't lie to you. I can't no. tell you anything but what it is. Um, the rest of it is good. Don't be sad. Oh, no, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Now I feel like such an idiot. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. God, I feel such a fool. Hey. Do you know you just can't hold the tears in? Yeah, of course. God, I don't know. Huh? Oh, it's the best heart I've ever tasted in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it is really yummy. Rylan, up you come. There you go. Rylan has baked a Lancashire courting cake, a three-tiered Victoria sponge filled with strawberries and vanilla cream. That is fantastic. Oh, yes. That is absolutely fantastic. Really? Yeah, really. It's such a shame because I so wanted to get rid of you out of the competition. <laughs> <laughs> that would be horrible to me. Light Victoria sponge, cream whipped just right, lots of vanilla, lots of sugar. The flavour of those baked strawberries and their syrup through the cake. Rylan, that's great. Oh, thank you so much. That tastes really good. I don't know how you pick things up so quickly. Maybe you're a chef in disguise. But... It's all been an act, yeah. I'm actually working a five-star restaurant, but no. I've, the the yeah. stars only got the three. <laughs> oh, do they? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, boys. Oh, Stop going nowhere! I love it, my cake! Yeah, I love the cake. What's that? I can't believe I can cook a cake. I can't believe I can cook a cake like that. That's like a, like a three-tiered cake. Like, like, 
cake. Misha, you and your sausage, please. Misha's classic is Cumberland sausage with Colcannon mash and shallot and red wine gravy. Sausage meat inside the sausage is nicely cooked and you've got a little bit of crispiness on that. Your cold cannon is buttery and soft and lovely and you've got real thickness and sweetness to your sauce. Well done, Misha. Thank you. You made a sausage, you made cold cannon you've never made before. You made a sauce you've never made before and it's a really good dish. Thank you. You're happy? I'm happy that you like it. I'm so happy. I'm so relieved. At the end, when I saw my plate looking exactly like the picture, I could have kissed myself. Mm. Sam's classic is a Devonshire apple dappy, a pudding made of dough rolled up with cooked apple, sugar and cinnamon, accompanied with a vanilla custard. Your rising agent, baking powder. Mm. Probably you could probably do a little bit more baking powder in there right. because your dough around the outside is a bit dense. As the rest of it, Sam, it's really good. You taste the apple, the cinnamon, the vanilla in the custard. Good for a packed lunch out in the field when you're a farmer. <laughs> <Arr>. <laughs> That's a pirate. They're different people all the time. <laughs> Uh, it's a little dense, your flavours are right, your custard's great, the apples inside are fantastic. It needs to be a little lighter, Sam. Right. Yeah. When I got it out of the oven, I was really chuffed. I thought, oh, this looks wicked. Um, but obviously, it's all in the tasting, and, and, and it was a little too dense, a little too hard. Um, so that's frustrating. Chesney, up you come, please. Chesney has made a Cumberland rum nicky, a lattice-topped pastry tart filled with rum-soaked dried fruit and served with a rum custard. Your pastry underneath is not cooked. Um, okay. We can see that. And also, you know, because it went in with 20 minutes left to go and it takes 35 minutes to cook but your pastry is also overworked, and that's why it's shrinking, and that's why it's falling apart. OK. This needs more cooking. Yes. But also, you haven't filled it completely. Look, we've got some empty spaces. It's, it's hard to ignore the problems. Yep. But wonderful flavours of, of, of ginger and rum. It's like the flavours of Treasure Island. It's absolutely <laughs> lovely. <clears throat> I mean, and the rum in the custard is superb. But you need more filling. Yes. It's a little sure. too dry. Oh, really? OK. Yeah. Thanks for your comments, guys. Cheers. Well, well done, babe. I, I was a little um, disappointed with, uh, with my efforts today. I didn't have enough time uh, to cook it all the way through, so uh, it was slightly undercooked. So, yeah, it was a little disappointing. It's so heartbreaking, isn't it? It's, just, it's literally, it's stupid. You're crying over a bit of pastry, but you get it because it's, it, your heart's in it. You want to do well. Yeah. I think all of them look good today. And they're so varied. Every dish in here is such a varied dish. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best thing, though, so it don't feel like you're competing. It's not like we all made the same thing. Exactly. Tom's in hospital, couldn't carry on with this round. Uh, that means we're left with seven cooks, and we've decided we're only going to lose one. But that means we've got to make a really tough decision. Most of them prove they can follow a recipe and they are competent. Competent, moving to actually very skillful. A couple of people here today, their weaknesses are obvious. You do get massively disappointed because you care so much, you know, and you want to do well. But, you know, what will be, will be. I'm a little nervous about the results today, yeah, because um, everybody else pretty much had very good comments, so I think uh, my MasterChef uh, future is, is hanging on a thread today, for sure.
thanks for your hard work. You lot are growing, not just in confidence, but also in skill, and that's why we love what we do. But we are sending one of you home. The contestant leaving us is Chesney. Oh. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Come in, partner. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, guys. Gutted. I won't tell a lie. I'm, I'm upset. I felt like I've come so far, um, and I'm proud of myself for getting this far. I really am. But. You know what? At the end of the day, it was so much fun, and I'm so happy I did it. Well done. Oh. Obviously, I'm over the moon to go through by the skin of my teeth, but, you know, really sad to see Chesney go. Emotional, isn't it? It really is. I mean, everyone's sort of getting to that point now where I think we're so tired and so you're so committed, you know, that it's not nice to see people go. I'm chuffed, man. I'm really chuffed that I got through. Because every, everybody's really good. Really good. I can't believe that I've made it to the final seven. <laughs> I'm against people that make amazing food. And to know that I've made it one more round feels pretty awesome. I'm starting to believe I'm good at a cake. I'm very happy with my cake skills now. I just hope for the next part I don't muck it up. When I saw that challenge today, I, I was terrified, but it's amazing what you can do when you are really sitting at the seat of your pants and you're like, it's incredible. Next time, <coughs> the remaining seven Aha. battle it out to make the final four. I think we've got two minutes left. You've got three minutes. I've got three, barking bucket. Smoking up the storm. There's going to be a tea party. A Mad Hatter's tea party. I think they're all going to get their dishes out. I think. I've seen a white rabbit, a knave of arts, and a Mad Hatter already. No damn tarts. What is this? I say off with their heads. <laughs> <laughs>